Hello everyone. In this fifth lesson of how to make your first game in Unity tutorial, we are going to work with the camera. Before we get into it, remember to subscribe to see more of this series and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I upload. It really helps me out. Now, on with the show. So there are many, many ways that you can have a camera in Unity follow the player or behave in different ways. I'm going to show you a couple of different ways in this tutorial and you can probably pick and choose one of your own or slightly modify it depending on what kind of camera system you would like. It's actually very very simple and most of the time cameras are. So how can we get it so as this camera will follow our player whenever we move? Well the simplest way of doing it is attaching the camera to the player itself. So if we were to get the camera, and you can see here, when we click the camera, we get this preview just down here. That's very handy to know. And we have a couple of options here on the component. But all I really want to do is get the camera into a position where I'm able to see the player a little better. So if I bring the camera closer, bring it up higher, and then rotate downwards slightly, we can see where the player is. So then if we attach the camera to the player, whenever the player moves, the camera will move with it. The reason is because the camera is now a child object of the player. So the player is the parent, the camera is the child, and both will move together, even though there is no script attached to the camera. Let's take a look. So there it is. So I'm moving backwards now. I'm moving across and you can see that wherever we go the camera is indeed following and I kind of like that it's simple it gets the point it gets the job done I would say that is probably the most simplistic way in all of unity to get a camera to follow a player and if you want that you can just do that but I'm going to show you a different way which is based upon pivoting now I like games where you have a character and you're able to pivot the camera and it follows the player around. Obviously, you can work with multiple different ways, advance different scripts. There's even a couple of scripts that Unity themselves offer on creating a camera that will follow a player. So again, it might be worth doing some research into this if you want to go a bit further. So let's uncouple that camera from the player. And now it is just a single object again. What I would like to do is bring the camera to the edge of our playable area, which is round about there. You can see it is just above. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a script which will allow the camera to follow wherever the player goes. So let's right click, create C sharp script. We'll call this camera follow. And then let's open that up in Visual Studio. Now this is actually very simple. It's much simpler than the last script that we did to control the player, but it still works on the same principle. We need something to happen every frame because we need the camera to constantly be following the player. So that means we're doing this in the update method, which also means we don't need the start at this point or any of these annotations, so we can delete those. We do need a variable, and this variable is going to be another different one. This variable is going to be a game object, and we're going to control this variable a little differently than we have with other variables. So let's declare it public, and the type is game object, and it does need to be a capital G and a capital O there. And now let's name this something relevant. We'll have just player and a semicolon to close that out. So the idea of how this is going to work is our camera is going to be able to pivot in its position and constantly look at our player. And we can do that in a couple of different ways in Unity itself, depending on the camera position. So we're just going to write this script and use the exact same script to control the camera in a slightly different way. You'll see what I mean. So the line of code to actually get this functioning as intended is quite simply to type transform with a lowercase t dot look at, and that's capital L, capital A, 
and in brackets, the target. So the target is going to be whatever the camera needs to focus on constantly. In this case, the player. But we can't simply just type player. We do need to say player dot transform. So the reason we have to do that is because this is working on the transform component. It's theoretically, you could think of it as looking only for a component. And as long as it focuses on the component that's attached to the player, we should be A-OK. -okay. So what this will do is it will constantly look at the player. So even when the player moves around, the camera will be looking at it. So we can save that script. Let's head back into Unity, give it a second to compile. And then all we need to do is attach this script to the main camera. So drag and drop. And if we click main camera, you'll see that extra component down there called camera follow, which is what we've just written. However, this is something we haven't seen up until this point in the series. Player, none, game object. What that means is we have to declare here what object we want the player to be. And obviously, if we put it as coin, it's not going to do anything at all. However, if we have player, whenever it moves, that means that the camera will constantly look at this variable here. So let's try that out. Let's drag and drop player there. You'll know it's worked because you'll see the little icon there and the word player. And now if we press play, we should see this camera focused right there. So let's try moving and see what the camera does. There we go. The camera is constantly looking at our player. So wherever we move, the camera is always looking. Now I kind of like this effect because it gives a bit of a difficulty. For example, if you have stuff that is a little far in the distance, it just makes it that little bit difficult, but it still works. If you've got coins over there, it just requires a bit more concentration. So I like the idea of pivoting a camera. Now, we can go a little bit further with this. If we were to bring this camera up a tad more, bring it across and pan it down by 90 degrees, we'd see exactly where our player is and we can get a top-down view. So you can have the camera anywhere you want here. For example, let's have it just there. It will still focus on our player. So you can see how that's switched around then. So depending on how you want your player to function, you can do it this way. Cool. So I do prefer having it probably somewhere around there, maybe a little higher, and maybe rotated down just a little bit more. So it's probably at this point, it's worth me mentioning, we're now five tutorials into this series. You guys should be refining your game a little more than what I am. I'm obviously not rushing through these tutorials, but I'm doing things a lot quicker than what you would be doing it. So it's always wise to take your time and refine things a little more. So right now we have this awesome little game going on where we can just move a cube around, but we can't really do anything else. So what would be the next logical step for us to do? I think it would be to collect these spinning coins. And that's what we're going to do in the next tutorial. We're going to write a script which will allow us to interact with these coins and collect them. Basically, just a collect-a-thon, you could think of it as. So, until that next tutorial, guys, I think you should just take your time. Like I say, refine. If you want things looking a little better, please do so. This is your game, after all. You're making your first game here, not mine. Uh, if you want to know any more, leave a comment below. Uh, hopefully try and get back to you or someone in this fantastic community will. So until the next tutorial, thank you very much for watching guys.